Good morning, church. It's so good to be with you. We're so glad that you've joined us. Um, we have just a small part of our team here today, and uh, we've missed each other, and we're glad to be here. And we're just ready to uh, sing and worship the Lord. And we're so glad you've joined us. Um, during this time, if you just want to comment and say who you are and where you're joining us from, we would love to know that. And uh, we just thank you. We're going to have a great time today. So why don't we, um, why don't we get started? Oh, what a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, yes, I'm leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, I'm leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms, and oh, how to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Yes, I'm leaning, I'm leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Everlasting arms, yes, I'm leaning, I'm leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms, yes, I'm leaning, I'm leaning, I'm safe and secure from all alarms.
trust in you. I know that no one is watching by accident. We've already been strengthened and encouraged by this time of worship. Now may your word be like a seed planted in our hearts that are ready to receive. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Thank you for joining us today. This is an incredible time of God's presence. I know you sense it where you are. It's strong in this place. I'm thankful that there are no challenges with God when it comes to distance. So from wherever you're watching, God is with you. You know, what is anchoring our hearts in this time is Isaiah 40, verse 31. It says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. What an incredible promise. There seems to be so much right now that's trying to press us down. But we have resolved in our hearts, by God's help, to rise up. I want that to resonate in your heart. It's a word from God for us. Rise up. How do we do it? I was helped in rising up by reading again the story of Joseph. It's his story that takes up more chapters in the book of Genesis than any other person. It starts in Genesis 37. He has this dream, and because of his brothers getting offended by that dream, they put him down into a pit, 
down is the operative word. They then sell him into slavery. And these merchants take him down, the Bible says, to Egypt. He ends up in Potiphar's house. So what I've just told you, it takes us from Genesis 37 to Genesis 39. As we step in to see how Joseph is doing, I wonder what we'll find. And when we open up to Genesis 39 verse 2, it says he's prospering. Even though he's been pressed down, he's rising up. He's not broken, he's not bitter, but prospering. He goes on to say that because of his diligence, even in this difficult season, he was being promoted. He was put in charge over everything in Potiphar's household, over everything that he owned. So the question is, how did he rise up? And it's right there in verse 2. Let me read it. It says, the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered. The Lord was with Joseph. That's a theme throughout his story. It is said many times right in chapter 39. So I didn't want to give you the first lesson from the life of Joseph to you and me in how we can rise up. Make God's presence your passion. The Lord was with him. The Lord is with us. You know, if I took a rock and I immersed it in the water and I held it there, then I took it out, I could break it in half and you'll find that the inside of the rock is dry because the rock is resistant. If I took a sponge and put it in the water, held it down for a few minutes, took it out, we will find that the sponge is full because it absorbs. I pray we will be like a sponge when it comes to the presence of God. Take in the presence of God. We can take in the stress of these challenging times, or we can take in the presence of God through praise. One of the lessons I gave last week was this, more praise, less news. Be informed, but give greater blocks of time to worshiping Jesus. Seek Him through His Word. Make God's presence your passion, and you can rise up. Secondly, with everything around us changing, let's hold on to the God who never changes. You know, just a few weeks ago, everybody was in school. Now they're out of school. We were able to gather in our church buildings, and now we can't. We were able to go to work, and now so many of us are working remotely. Or perhaps you've even lost your job. So everything seems to be changing. So let's hold on to God who never does. You know, I listed things that are changing. I just recited some of them. But I also took some time and listed the things about God that never changes. Why don't you do that in one of your devotional times? I wrote, God is sovereign, and that hasn't changed. The angels still answer his call and do his bidding. What Jesus did on the cross, it still saves sinners. The Holy Spirit, it still indwells the saints, and I feel God's presence right now. God is holy, faithful, perfect, and true, and he gives joy to those who seek him. All of these wonderful attributes of God that will never change. James writing about the Lord said, there's not even a variableness or a shadow of turning with him. Hold on to God. He'll anchor your soul. You know, we spend time building our faith and we, we hold on to our faith. But in times like these, your faith is going to hold you because your faith is anchored in an unchanging God. Number three, you can rise up because of Genesis 50, 20. It's my third point. It says that what the enemy meant for evil, God meant for good to the saving of many lives or to bring about, one version says, the saving of many nations. Joseph said what the enemy meant for evil, knows that word meant, God meant it for good. That word is used twice and the picture and definition of the word meant there is that of a weaver. So Joseph is saying the enemy had a plot and he was carefully weaving that plot and plan to bring me down. But the master weaver, God, 
He wove that plan, a greater plan. And that's why Joseph was able to rise up. And the reason that you and I can is because God is in control. And he's weaving a greater plan. And even all that's happening right now, somehow in the sovereignty of God, he's going to weave it together as part of this story of believers who are overcoming by the presence, power, and promise of God. The verse goes on to say, to bring about the saving of many lives or many nations. To bring about is the picture of a master builder. Like he's constructing, he's building something toward an intended end. He's building something in your life and mine. It's called destiny. And everything that's going on right now is not going to short circuit the destiny of God over your life and mine. The essence of Genesis 50, 20 is this. God brought Joseph through. And God's going to bring you through. God's going to bring us through. God is that one who always makes a way. He brought Moses and the Israelites through the Red Sea, through the wilderness. He brought Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego through the fiery furnace. Daniel through the lion's den. Psalm 23 says that he will bring us through even the valley of the shadow of death. It's the very character and nature of God to bring us through. So as this worship team rejoins me today, I want to tell you, we're not going to have to rebuild our momentum spiritually. When we all get to come back together, we're going to be in the greatest momentum we've ever known. We're not going to step back during this time. We're going to step up. We're not going to slow down our vision during this time. We're going to speed the vision up because God's presence is with us and his presence is our passion because we're holding on to a God who never changes, though everything around us is, and because we have 50-20 vision that everything that's going on that the enemy would like to use to defeat us, the master weaver and the master builder is gonna shape it and form it so that our destiny is realized. Yes, when we all come back together, there will be a burst of God's presence and power We're going to be in the greatest revival we have ever been in. So be encouraged. Through it all, through it all, we're trusting. Through it all, we're depending upon God. Through it all, we're finding His Word as a foundation upon which we can stand. Come on, turn what God's doing in your life right now. Turn it into worship. Join this team and declare this to the Lord. to every person who has joined us today. You know their situation. You know the details of their life. You know the things that would would be heavy in their hearts. But I thank you for your word today that is so powerful and is ministering right now and is lifting. We are rising up. We have risen up as we've worshiped today. 
We've risen up by hearing your word, that faith that comes from hearing the word of God. It is so real and powerful and it's active right now. We just pray right now for every person who is watching, who's under the sound of my voice, that you would just lift their spirits. God, our focus would be on you. You're the one who is the constant. You are the constant in our lives. And although you never change, when you're in the situation, when our trust is in you, you can change anything. And we believe that you're turning it. We believe that those circumstances, you're turning them, God. All things, all things work together for the good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So we thank you for the truth of your word today. And we just ask you, Lord, to meet every need as we trust and seek your face. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen. What an amazing time. And a thank you for watching today. Now, a few things. This Wednesday at 7, the youth program is going to be so awesome. Share it with your students. Make sure you ask them to check it out because it's going to be awesome. Thursday, 10 a.m. and again at 6. Our kids ministry team, they're going to bring such a fun and powerful time for all of our kids. And then next weekend, I'm excited to announce that Kelly will be sharing her story and these biblical insights that God has put into her heart that have helped her to rise up when it would have been so easy for the circumstance to have kept her down. This will be a weekend that you'll want to invite all of your friends to watch. We're believing God to do great things. Finally, there are a few ways for you to give. They're listed on the screen right now. Thank you for your faithfulness. Last weekend, your generosity was overwhelming. I know it will be the same this weekend. Again, we're not going to lose step. We're not going to have to kind of recover. We're going to come out of this time even stronger. God bless you for your generosity. We're praying healing and help for all of you. We love you so much. Have the best day.